NHK World. like this have developed distinctive cultural traditions. The village of Shirakawago lies in the mountains of Gifu Prefecture in the center of Japan. Nestling in a valley, the village contains many old wooden farmhouses built with distinctive steeply angled roofs. Because Shirakawago preserves the landscape of a traditional mountain village, it has been recognized by UNESCO as a world heritage site. The people living in this isolated community in the mountains have developed a deep sense of community, engendered by a long history of interdependence. For centuries, the work of thatching the old farmhouses required the participation of the whole community. That communal spirit remains alive in Chiracawa, though, to this day. The farmhouses were built with architectural techniques that have a strong scientific rationale. This week on Begin Japanology, we explore the traditional buildings and way of life that has been preserved in the world heritage site of Shirakawako. Hello and welcome to Begin Japanology. I'm Peter Barakan. Today I'm standing in the village of Shirakawago, which is pretty much right in the middle of Japan, deep in the mountains of Gifu Prefecture. This area is well known for its traditional farmhouses, which are built in a distinctive architectural style known as Gashou Zukuri. In 1995, this landscape, complete with its farmhouses, was registered as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Currently, here in Shirakawago, there are 113 of these traditional farmhouses preserved. So let's go straight down and have a look at the village. If you look up at the house from the end here, you can see the shape of the gables is an equilateral triangle. In the old days, people saw that shape and they'd think this. When you pray, in Japanese, this position is called gashō. It literally means to put your hands together. And um, the term gashō zakuri just refers to houses built in a shape of your hands in, in the praying position. Most of the Gashol Zakuri farmhouses here were built in the 18th and 19th centuries. In 1935, a German architect called Bruno Taut visited this village, and it's through his writings that people outside Japan first became aware of this style of architecture. In his writings, Bruno Taut praised the buildings here as being extremely rational and logical buildings. He recognized the fact that the way they were built incorporated many techniques that were well suited to the conditions in this area, as we'll see in our first video. The Japanese archipelago runs roughly north-south. People in each region developed their own indigenous architecture that blended harmoniously with the natural landscape. The Gashō Zakuri farmhouses of Shirakawago are an excellent example of this. The thick thatched roofs can withstand the wind and snow for 50 years or more. They're made of plants that grow naturally in this area. River stones are used for the foundations of the houses. All the construction materials are readily available close at hand. Many of the architectural features were developed to enable the gas Shozakuri houses to survive the long, harsh winters here. Shirakawago lies in one of Japan's snowiest regions. Winter it is whipped by fierce north winds, and the snow piles up more than two meters thick. 
that is why the roofs of the buildings are so steeply pitched. The snow has to be shoveled off to extend the life of the thatch. The snow can melt in the ponds or channels built under the eaves. The windows of the gas shozakuri houses are covered with shoji screens made of washi paper, which allows the light to filter in. Seen from close up, it's noticeable that these windows are not fitted vertically. They tilt inwards at the bottom. This is to prevent rain and snow from falling directly on the paper in the screens. Gasho Zakuri houses are also perfectly adapted to the hot, humid conditions of the rainy season. The thatching material contains natural oils, so it repels the rain. But it also allows plenty of ventilation, which keeps the interior of the house cool in summer. The roofs are designed so that they can withstand even the most extreme weather conditions. In 2004, a major typhoon roared directly across central Japan. In Gifu Prefecture, wind speeds of 108 kilometers per hour were recorded. Many villages near Shirakawa go sustained considerable damage. Shirakawago itself was buffeted with fierce gusts and driving rain, but its gasho zakuri houses suffered almost no damage. The main reason for that is the way the roofs are constructed. The valley in which Shirakawago lies acts much like a wind tunnel. During the summer, typhoon-driven gusts blow from the south. In winter, it is blasted by strong northerly gales. The Gasho Zakuri houses are carefully oriented so that the force of these winds is taken by their triangular end gales. At the same time, the interior structure of the roofs is ingeniously designed to absorb the force of the wind. No nails or metal fittings are used in building the roofs for the Gasho Zakuri houses. They can weigh as much as 40 tons, but they're assembled entirely out of wood and rope. The components that are subject to the greatest forces are the pine log rafters, which rise at a steep angle. The ends of these log rafters are beveled, and they are not fixed in place. They simply rest in hollow indentations in the ceiling beams. As a result, when the wind blows against the roof, it will lean to the side. Rather than trying to fight against the power of the wind, these roofs are designed to sway with it. The roof makes a creaking sound. And when the wind blows against it along this axis, it tilts quite a bit. But it's designed so that it reverts back into position once the wind dies down. How does the roof manage to return to its original position after it has tilted in the wind? The secret lies in the way the roof timbers are lashed together. Saplings of Japanese witch hazel, which grow readily in this area, are used to tie the roof together. This tree has very flexible fibers, so once they have been tied in place, these lashings will never come under. When the roof tilts from the force of the wind, these lashings stretch, much like rubber bands. And when the wind dies down, they contract again. This ability to contract is what returns the roof to its original position. Behind their stately appearance, Shirakawago's Gasho Zakuri houses feature a range of architectural features that make them perfectly adapted to this mountain environment. Shirakawago gets snowed in for several months each year, and it, in the past it would have been completely isolated from the outside world. So people had to acquire skills to survive through the winter in what would have been a fairly harsh environment. 
Luckily, this area is blessed with a rich natural setting. Stone and ceramic artifacts dating back over 2,500 years have been found here in the Shorgawa River Valley. And the fact that people have been living here for so long indicates, first of all, that there were plenty of fish in the river. Probably also, the mountains that completely encircle this village would have afforded very good protection from prospective enemies from outside. All over Japan, in each region, people developed distinctive farmhouses which were adapted to local conditions and climate. For most modern Japanese, traditional mountain villages like these are deeply evocative of the past. And perhaps the Gashō Zukuri houses of Shirakawago are the most impressive of all. This is one of the houses in the village, and we're going to go in and take a look now. This house was built 180 years ago, and seven generations of the Kanda family have lived here. At times, there were more than 20 people living together under the same roof, and the house has over 10 rooms. People living in a traditional house like this would keep a fire burning all year round. The houses are extremely well ventilated, and even when it's very hot outside, the houses are remarkably cool inside. So having a fire like this is not oppressively hot for a start. Also, the smoke from the hearth is very important. The houses are made almost entirely of wood and other plant-derived materials, and the smoke wafts through the whole house all the way up to the timber frame of the roof, prevents rotting, and also drives out pests. There's a kind of symbiosis between a house like this and its inhabitants. One of the reasons why these houses are built so big is, of course, because traditionally people lived in large extended families. Next, we'll take a look at the style of life in the old days. This house, the Toyama residence, is designated as an important cultural property of Japan. In the late 19th century, Households in remote mountain villages often consisted of three or four generations living together under the same roof. The Toyama residence would have been home to more than 40 people at a time. In those days, seri culture was an important source of income in Shirakawa. Raising silkworms is labor-intensive, so large families were needed to provide the workforce. the tradition in Shirakawago that only the heir of the household, the oldest son, could formally marry and have his wife living with him in the house. The wives of other sons had to remain with their own families, and their children too. This meant that the sons would stay together in their own household to ensure a stable supply of labor. The rooms in the Gashō Zukuri houses were built to accommodate large extended families. At the centre of the house was the main living room, where guests would be entertained, marriage ceremonies performed, and so on. This room is where Buddhist worship would take place. There is a strongly rooted tradition of Buddhism in Shirakawa Go dating back centuries, and many houses boast highly elaborate Buddhist altars. This is the sleeping quarters used by the head of the family and his wife, from one generation to the next. Only the head of the sprawling multi-generation household had the luxury of a private room. And this is the dining room. It would have been used mainly for meals, and is the place where the family would gather. The layout of the Gashō Zukuri houses in Shirakawa Go was inextricably linked with the traditional system of large families whose lives were based around sericulture. But in 1929, the great stock market crash occurred in the United States. It had major repercussions for Japan's silk industry. The market for raw silk, Japan's biggest export, collapsed virtually overnight. It was a watershed moment for Shirakawa Go's sericulture-based society. Silk production dwindled in the village, and the young people steadily left. 
migrating in search of work to the big cities around Japan. The only people left in the Gashtozakuri houses were the old people. The labour shortage was so acute that in some cases entire families left en masse. As people moved away, houses were left abandoned. The collapse of the extended family system made it increasingly difficult to carry on living in the harsh mountain conditions. After the Second World War came Japan's economic miracle. Between 1955 and 1965, Japan experienced a period of rapid economic growth. The waves of development and modernization even reached remote communities like Shirakawa -go and had a huge impact on people's lives. The Shogawa River flows through the valley where Shirakawa -go lies. The steep topography makes it perfect for building dams. In this area alone, six dams were constructed. A broad new paved road was laid through the center of the village. The old community hall and school were replaced with modern structures. Many locals tore down their gashosakuri houses, preferring simple corrugated metal roofs to thatch, which is so high maintenance and vulnerable to fire. In the space of a few decades, about two-thirds of the gashosakuri houses were demolished. seen modernization driven by Japan's post-war economic boom led to many of the traditional farmhouses getting pulled down. As in the old blues song, you don't miss your water till the well runs dry, some of the local residents started to feel a sense of alarm and they mobilized as a community in an attempt to save their traditional culture. That effort, as it were, sowed the seed of a conservation movement, and that led in turn eventually to UNESCO recognizing Shirakawa Go as a World Heritage Site. Most of Japan is mountainous, and especially in the past, people tended to live in very small mountain villages, communities where everybody knew everything about everybody else. In Japan, there's an expression, murashakai, uh, which means literally village society. It even is used to apply to society these days as well. In a society like that, everybody has to cooperate all the time on everything. And perhaps the most symbolic kind of cooperation of that type is when the roof of a gasho zukuri house needs to be rethatched. We're going to take a look at that process on our next video. Planting the fields, harvesting the rice, celebrating weddings. In Shirakawa Go, virtually all aspects of life depended on people helping each other. In this area, people feel a strong sense of being related. It's a community based on mutual assistance. If people work together, they can survive in any environment, no matter how harsh the conditions. That spirit remains alive today. The power of these communal bonds is vividly demonstrated in thatching the roof of the Gashos of Willie House. In the old days, whenever it came time to re-thatch someone's roof, all the villagers pitched in to get the job done. One reason why Shirakawa Go was designated as a UNESCO World Heritage Site, besides the buildings and their scenic charm, was the lingering community spirit. However, as the population dropped after the Second World War, the villagers' lifestyles changed, and it became increasingly hard to mobilize the community when roofs needed rethatching. In recent years, many families have had to turn to professional thatches, and it is rare for the whole village to be mobilized in that way. But there is one family that wanted to have its house rethatched in the traditional way. The household of the 250-year-old Nagase residents.
There are now five people in the Hagasse household. They run a company that processes edible mountain herbs, and they have maintained the Gasho Zukuri tradition. The eldest son, Zenjiro, moved away when he was 15 to go to high school. But he returned when he was 20, because he wanted to preserve his ancestral home. He says he never had second thoughts. Listening to the old people talking, I found out that there are a lot fewer Gashou Zukuri houses than there used to be. If I can help to preserve even one, it will be worth it. Preparations for thatching the roof of the Nagase residence begin ten months before the work itself. Thatching a roof is a massive task that is done only once in a generation. In order to plan it as a communal effort, means gathering the entire extended family for a meeting. The head of the household, Nagase Junichi, is no longer strong enough to climb up onto the roof these days. After talking it over, he entrusts the rethatching work to his eldest son, Zenjiro, who is 29. At the meeting, the family looks over written records of past communal thatching projects. In the old days, people would write down the names of everyone who came to help with the communal thatching work, and they could number in the hundreds. Based on those records, a minimum of 400 people will be needed to rethatch the Nagase residence. make a communal thatching happen, the owner must go around to ask for help from each friend and neighbour individually. Two months before the date set, Zenjiro begins doing this. It's hard for him to ask for help from people who don't live themselves in Gashou Zukuri houses. The old custom was that you repaid someone for helping to thatch your roof by helping to thatch theirs when the time came round. But this reciprocal arrangement doesn't work when neighbours no longer live in thatched houses. I realise your family doesn't live in a Gashou Zukuri house, so I hesitate to ask, but I was wondering if you could pitch in to help. Twenty years ago, people used to ask me for help with thatching all the time. But most houses have metal roofs now, and in the past ten years I haven't had many requests. It's been a long time, so I feel a little bit nervous, but I'm also happy to help. Day after day, Zenjiro goes out each evening, recruiting additional participants for the communal thatching. In the past month, he has visited 120 homes. But how many people will actually show up on the day? He won't know until the day arrives. Zenjiro is anxious about whether enough people will show up. So he goes to visit a conservation group based in Tokyo. He realizes that these days, expertise and manpower will be needed from outside the village. The conservation group agrees to put out a request for volunteers through its newsletter. The day for the huge roof to be rethatched finally arrives. At seven in the morning, the villagers begin to assemble. gets underway. As it begins, more and more people show up. Around 110 volunteers have come from all over Japan. Students from the local junior high school are also pitching in. The roof will need more than 100,000 bundles of thatch. The reason why so many workers are needed is to pass all the thatching material up to those working on the roof. 
This project has brought together local people and volunteers from around the country. A new kind of communal bond is formed, different from the era when residents of mountain villages had only each other to depend on. The actual thatching work is done by 39 men lined up side by side. They have to stay in formation so that the thatch is laid evenly across the entire 20 metre wide roof. Zenjiro has assigned himself to the thatching team even though this work is usually done by more experienced men. His job is to ram the thatch, adjusting it to the slope of the roof. Eighty years have passed since the last time the community turned out to thatch the roof of the Nagase residence. In all, around 500 people take part, far more than Zenjiro had hoped for. It takes them all day, about eight and a half hours. Finally, the job is done. The enormous newly thatched roof is a testament to the cooperative effort. It's basically the result of human kindness. People just wanting to come and help. Words aren't good enough to express my gratitude. I'm so happy. The people who live in Shirakawa Garden and the others who have made their way from around the country. Together they can share the memories and satisfaction of a job well done. The strong sense of community that evolved in traditional mountain villages is taking on a new form in contemporary Japan. The scenery around Shirakawago is some of the most beautiful in Japan. But maintaining the rich fabric of a mountain village like this does require a lot of effort, not to mention expense. Traditionally, in communities like these, every time a roof needed thatching, for example, the whole village would come together and cooperate, and they were able to maintain a high degree of self-sufficiency. However, as we've seen, rural populations are now dwindling, and people have no alternative but to look outside for volunteer help. Fifty years from now, when that roof needs rethatching again, I wonder how far afield people are going to have to go to find the help they need. I'll see you again next time. Exhibition of the In Japanology, we focus on fire.